Good day, children. To continue with what we had done last time, today we shall talk talk about the industrial preparation of nitric acid. Industrial preparation refers to when we have to prepare something on a large scale of nitric acid. So the process is known as Ostwald process. Ostwald. Now, this process includes three main uh, steps. Step 1 is catalytic oxidation of ammonia. Catalytic oxidation of ammonia. You have done this in the properties of ammonia. We talked about this. So, ammonia and oxygen when passed over platinum which acts as a catalyst at a temperature of 700 to 800 degrees at a pressure of 1 to 2 atmospheres it forms nitric oxide and water and the reaction is exothermic 21.5 kilocalories of heat is given out okay okay we will balance the equation okay so this was the first step this process takes place in a chamber which is known as catalytic chamber. Catalytic chamber. Now in this chamber, as I told you, this much of temperature is built in. Uh, the mixture of ammonia and oxygen is allowed in. The ratio is 1 is to 10. Actually, we don't just take uh, oxygen, we take air. Because the entire air is not oxygen. So that is why such a large quantity of air is taken. And uh, uh, so this is the first step. And the step two is, step two is oxidation of nitric oxide. Oxidation of nitric oxide. This nitric oxide which is formed, it oxidizes at a temperature of 50 degrees. Do you note down the difference in the temperature? In the first step, the temperature was 700 to 800. In the second step, the temperature required is 50 degrees Celsius and this forms NO2. Okay. This, this process takes place in a chamber which is known as oxidation chamber. I will tell you a little more uh, briefly about each of these chambers later. But first let us do the steps. So and step 3 is the uh, absorption of nitrogen dioxide this nitrogen dioxide in water and this process takes place in a chamber which is known as absorption tar so these are the three main tars which are involved in Ostwald's process here in nit nitrogen dioxide and water and some more oxygen they combine together and they form HNO3 so, okay. So, uh, this is how nitric acid is formed. If you have to write, draw a flow chart of this, then uh, you will write it as ammonia and oxygen. Both of them are allowed to enter into a chamber A, where A is the catalytic chamber. Uh, the temperature is also provided over here and the catalyst is also provided. Then it is passed through B. B is, B are the cooling pipes. Now, as I told you earlier, see initially the temperature was 700 to 800. The next temperature required is 50 degrees. So, we need to pass the gases through cooling pipes. Here nothing is going on, no uh, reaction is going on, no alteration is going on. Only the temperature is cooled down from 700 to 50 degrees. Once the temperature is brought down, then it passes on to the next chamber, which is known as oxidation tar or oxidation chamber. From here, <coughs> the next chamber is absorption tar. And then uh, nitric acid is collected, HNO3 is collected. Uh, in some books 
they might extend it to e and e will be the collection tower that is all right that's okay now uh, i will just briefly tell you about each of these towers now the first thing is that uh, the ratio in which ammonia and uh, air i'll write air are taken is 1 is to 10 now there is there are two main reasons one is if you start separating oxygen from the air then it will add to the cost okay one thing and second thing is if you notice that we are using oxygen in all the three steps in the first step in the second step as well as in the third step so uh, whatever oxygen is utilized over here good enough otherwise the excess oxygen or the remaining components of the air do not interfere in any way in the process which is going on so in the next step the remaining oxygen is used up and if there is excess oxygen there is no interference and then the uh, remaining oxygen is used in the third step also uh, so it does not cause any interference and plus it is required in all the three stages uh, so that is why we take air in a large quantity only we have to uh, ensure that it should not contain uh, any impurities only impurity should not be there because otherwise the catalyst will be poisoned okay now in the second chamber ox uh, then of course the uh, uh, cooling pipes are there which are only uh, bringing down the temperature one and then cooling pipes are here bringing down the temperature because the oxidation takes place best at a low temperature okay oxidation uh, best at low temperature that is why it is important to bring down the temperature when the temperature is low then a uh, first oxidation is easy uh, oxidation is easy and you can say it is complete and second is it minimizes the no decomposition it minimizes the chances of decomposition of nitrogen dioxide okay so which may occur at a higher temperature so that is why we keep the temperature low next is in the absorption tower the absorption tower by the way is packed with quartz quartz is a type of mineral okay i'll just draw the chamber this is the absorption tower the absorption tower is neatly packed lined with quartz okay this is quartz and then uh, whatever nitrogen dioxide is coming over here it goes here there is a shower of water dropped from the top this is water i'm talking of the third reaction uh, no2 is coming from here okay so this uh, and the unused oxygen okay uh, no2 and the unused oxygen comes and from here it begins to rise up okay here it meets with water when it combines with water it begins to fall down as nitric acid so this is how nitric acid is obtained now this quartz layer one as i told you earlier nitric acid is highly corrosive so this quartz layer is not affected by it is not affected by nitric acid which is otherwise a very very strong acid so no2 and uh, oxygen and water combine together and they form nitric acid so one advantage is why do we prefer taking quartz because it is not affected by nitric acid and two uh, it it is close it is packed in lines why is it closely packed because it prevents the mixing up of no2 this no2 which is going up and this nitric acid which is falling down both the things are going on in the same chamber so the gas is not allowed to mix with nitric acid so that is the reason why it is packed in layers why uh, quartz is packed in layers to prevent the mixing of no2 and nitric acid okay that is why it is packed in layers so by the way this nitric acid which we obtain from here from this chamber is 50% concentrated to concentrate it per, to concentrate it further we begin to boil it when we boil it the per, the uh, from 50% concentration the concentration increases to 
increases to 68 percent this is also not enough but as soon as the concentration reaches 68 percent a constant boiling mixture is also formed constant boiling mixture is formed which is at a temperature of 121 degree celsius all right now to concentrate it further we add concentrated sulfuric acid h2so4 which will absorb the water and the concentration will increase to 98 percent concentration increases to 98 percent when the concentration of nitric acid is 98 percent we call it fuming nitric acid fuming nitric acid all right so this is all we had about the oswald's process this is how we obtain a nitric acid uh, a few pr the properties of nitric acid we shall do next time all right children have a good day god bless you